I gotta explain something to you. So when I was praying earlier, um, you know, Jesus told, told us a story that he told me and he told me to tell y'all for real. So I told y'all a story through prayer about concrete and soil. So Jesus taught us, taught us about soil and soil, understand that in that prayer is your mind and your spirit. So understand that we all come into this world as concrete, faithless. And you have to open up your heart to become someone of faith. When you become someone of faith, you know, then you're just religious at first, so you're shallow. You show up on Sunday. You, uh, when times get hard, you think about God. So then, you know what, you gotta open your heart some more, and you turn into fertile soil, and then you have little thorns and some weeds in your life. And those thorns and weeds in your life are fear. Okay. It's fear. It's fear. It's fear of letting go of the world. It's fear of things in your life changing. It's fear. And then you have to move on and let go of those fears. And you become fertile soil. And understand that the seeds that go into those soil, to that soil, is God's word. When you let go of the fears of your life, I can give you God's word and it become as prosperous as it needs to be in your life. So today, I surely pray, and I pray for everyone in here that no matter what soil you came here as, you upgrade a little bit as I talk. So, this is what I'm talking to you guys about today. There is peace in faith and love. And this is God's biggest lesson to humanity. It's what the whole Bible is about. So understand, for me to start here, I gotta start in the very beginning with Adam and Eve, all right? So Adam and Eve, the Lord created Adam from the ground. When he created him from the ground, he told him this, you can eat from any tree in the garden. Just don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and bad. Understand that in our lives, we all start out in Eden. My son is one years old. He's in Eden. He can make any choice. And guess what? Because he did not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and bad yet, he did not draw an opinion. He can do what he wants stress-free. So understand that, you know, from this story, we understand that God truly made us to be able to make any choice we want to make. Just don't draw an opinion, because your opinion will surely lead to death. So at some point in your life, you decided, I have an opinion. And that opinion grew into your personality. So understand that when these things happen, you were kicked out of Eden, and you failed. So understand that from this story, we fall, and where do we fall to? We fall to the valley of the shadow of death. So Psalms 23, 4 says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And so, I'm gonna be real with y'all, and I gotta take y'all through the whole journey of the Bible real quick. So when you're in the, in the valley of the shadow of death, what does that truly feel like? It feels like stress. It feels like anxiety. It feels like depression. It feels like trauma, and it feels like addiction. So understand that stress. I'm gonna read you something from Psalms 31, 9 and 13, explaining stress. This is David. He said, have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My body and soul are withering away. I am dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. Sin has drained my strength. I am wasting away from within. I am scorned by all enemies and despised by my neighbors. Even my friends are afraid to come near me. When they see me on the street, they run the other way. I am ignored as if I were dead, as if I were a broken pot. I have heard the many rumors about me and I am surrounded by terror. My enemies conspire against me, plotting to take my life. Does anybody know what stress feels like? You know what stress feels like, thank you. This is not gonna work if you don't talk back to me. I talk back to you. Anxiety. This is what Samuel said, the very next day, a tormenting spirit from God overwhelmed Saul 
and began to, he began to rave in his house like a madman. David was playing the harp as he did each day, but Saul had a spear in his hand, and he suddenly hurled it at David, intending to pin him to the wall, but David escaped him twice. Does anybody know what anxiety feels like in here? I do. Yeah. Depression is in Ecclesiastes 2, 17. The reason why I'm reading, I'm reading all these things so that you understand that these things are real, but you also do have power over them. So depression, so I came to hate life because everything done here under the sun is so troubling. Everything is meaningless like chasing the wind. Ecclesiastes 2, 17. Trauma, so this is the story of Job. Does anybody know who Job is? He lost everything. 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 While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were feasting in their oldest brother's home. Suddenly, a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed, and all our children are dead. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Job stood up and tore his robe in grief. Then he shaved his head and fell to the ground to worship. He said, I came naked from my mother's womb, and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. Does anybody know what trauma feels like in your life? Yes. Addiction. Proverbs 23, 29 to 25. I mean, 29 to 35, I'm sorry. Who has anguish? Who has sorrow? Who is always fighting? Who is always complaining? Who has unnecessary bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? It is the one who spends long hours in the taverns trying out new drinks. Don't gaze at the wine, seeing how red it is, how it sparkles in the cup, how smoothly it goes down. For in the end, it bites like a poisonous snake. It stings like a viper. You will see hallucinations, and you will say crazy things. You will stagger like a sailor tossed at sea, clinging to a swaying mast. And you will say, they hit me, but I didn't feel it. I didn't even know when they beat me up. When will I wake up so I can look for another drink? Does anybody know what addiction feels like? So understand, in the valley of the shadow of death, this is what it feels like when you fall. Everything that's wrong in the world has power over you. But you gotta understand that when Jesus came into the world, it said this, a light has shone in the valley of the shadow of death. And he said that when that light shone in the darkness, darkness comprehended it not. And you gotta understand when Jesus came into the world as his light, it was filled with two, he said he was filled with two things, unfailing love and faithfulness. This same person, Jesus Christ, told us these two things. He said, this is what I commanded you, to love God and love one another. These are the two things that make God happy. But understand what he's been trying to teach you. He's been trying to teach you that your opinion has been killing you. And he's been trying to teach you. You know what he did? He let you go. He let you fall. He said, he, wanted, he said, how long can you go in this world with your opinion thinking that you're right over me? And he let you try it out. Has anybody's opinion made their life perfect yet? So understand, Jesus Christ came into the world and he said he is the way the truth and the life. So understand this, that there is true peace in faith and love. So understand this also. In Psalms, it talks about how, well, actually in Isaiah, the Lord was speaking, he was saying, I don't want your burnt offerings. I don't want your burnt sacrifices. He does not care about what you do physical in your life to be right with him. You know what he wants you to do? He wants you to let go of your opinion for his truth. And understand this, as far as you come today, you're still alive. 
Has any hurt in them? And he's trying to teach you that even through death, if you fix your mind on faith and love, you will always have peace. Because I'm going to give you a situation real quick. If me and you are in a relationship, right? We cool together, right? You my brother. If every time I get with you, I love God and I love you. But, hold on one second. I'm going to make sure with you too, though. But every time I get with you, I don't love God and I don't love you every time I talk to you. When you pass... I'm going to have a whole lot more peace than we were on the same journey together and I know where you are and I know where you're going. When you pass, it's going to kill me in my mind. So understand this. He's told you that everything of this world is temporary. Paul wrote this in a letter. He said, we fix our gaze on things unseen for what's seen will be no more and everything unseen will soon be seen. Fix your minds on faith and love and you will find peace in your lives with any situation that arises. Jesus Christ came into this world and he said this. He said, through my teachings, you have been pruned. Through my teachings, you have been pruned. You now have the power to stump and crush any wild animal that tries to attack you. In Genesis, he called a serpent a wild animal. Understand these wild animals are in your mind. Anxiety, depression, trauma, stress, and addiction cannot touch you when you fix your mind on faith and love. It cannot touch you. And it never will. And understand this, I'm gonna talk to you a little more about a test that this life is. Just like Job was tested. I'm going to tell you what happened with Job. Before he lost everything, this is what they said. This is what they said. It said the Lord was up above with his holy counsel, right? And they're just meeting, you know, doing lordly things, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he said when they met, the devil showed up. And he was like, where you come from? And the devil was like, I've been on the earth patrolling everything you created. And the Lord was like, have you seen my fine servant Job? He's righteous, isn't he? He's faithful. He's blameless. He loves me. The devil said, of course he loves you. You protect everything in his life. You know what the Lord said? Take it. And he's still going to love me. So understand this. We live in a time right now. In Revelation, John was shown a whole bunch about heaven and what's to come. When he went up there, he was talking to an elder. He said, who are these people in this great crowd? And the elder said, these are, the, these are those that died in the great tribulation. They have washed their sins away in the blood of the Lamb. And now they stand before his throne in his glory day and night, worshiping him. Understand, that's the time we live in right now. You are being tested. And Jesus Christ came into this world and said, the answer to your test is to love God and love one another. So understand tonight, by coming here tonight and being a part of this event, filled with faith and love, you are passing your test. You like that? <laughs> you are passing your test. You are making God happy right now. And today, you know what today was about? It was about showing how happy God is with these children right here. Because they've surely washed, <laughs> washed themselves clean. And this great love and faith is centered around them. So understand, there is great peace in love and faith. God does
does not want your burnt sacrifices and your lambs and your cow and your food that you throw away and say, I'm doing this for him. He don't want that. He wants you to throw away your opinion for his truth. Because understand, the enemy is truly in opinion. The devil had an opinion against God. That's why he's the enemy. Let go of your opinion and be perfect in your love like you're called to be. And that's all I got for you guys today. Woo!